Welcome back to another episode of Beyond Grayskull. Let's skip the small talk. I'm Wayne, and this is He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. Episode 7, entitled He-Man the Hunted. We begin this episode with Jake Skeleton's missing testicle jumping all over the bloody place as a big green-ass tiger pounces on the little orange bastard and is on the hunt. The tiger, in fact, is Cringer, although a little younger, as he captures the little testicle and is about to devour it, a voice can be heard in the distance. Hey, <laughs> so long, sucker! I'm out of here! Well, it appears Cringer has lost his lunch, cutting to Prince Adam also much younger, as this is the first time both have come face to face with one another, as Adam appears to be lost with no memory. <laughs> you know, sounds like me last week after my last bender at the pub. Adam, well, he says to Cringer, you got no claws, dickhead. But Cringer replies, some dipshit took them from me. <laughs> yeah, suck shit, you green hairy bastard. Cringer replies, I'll eat your ass next time, you little turd. Cringer offers Adam a lift and takes him back to his tiger tribe. Cutting to present day as Adam, Kraz and Cringer all make their return back to the Tiger tribe to check in and drop off some dirty laundry. I mean really, our heroes have never changed their clothes, they must smell like raw sewage tanks by now. They are sniffed out by Ron Howard's brother, or is that Mr. Freeze from the Batman animated series? I mean, whoever this toolbag is, he appears to have the other tigers under his control. Returning back to Teela at Castle Grayskull, she tries to be searching for Keldor, aka Skeletor's whereabouts. Orko says, "Oh, it pretty. Shit, and is electrocuted like the dipshit he is. Teela fed up with Orko shit goes to Duncan and tells him fix this little turd or I'm jamming this tool where the sun don't shine get me? Orko messes around with his magic sending a vehicle Duncan had been working on smashing into some rocks. Duncan informs Teela look bitch I'm trying to fix him but he still thinks he is this great wizard Orko. Screw it let's take him to Troller the home world of the real Orko's people. Adam, Kraz, and Cringer run into some trouble as they come across the droids from the first episode. As they take Adam's sword and flee, Adam and Kraz follow close behind. Then Adam and Kraz, well, they have an argument. But Adam says, shut up, slag. How dare you? I won't be. Shut the hell up. And look, Adam says. Adam's sword is just laid out there in the open. This is way too easy. And, oh shit, it's the Ewoks trap from Return of the Jedi. Oh wait, it's just Ron Howard's brother. As now he calls himself Rekraz and claiming the power sword for himself, yet says he has unfinished business with Cringer. As you see, Rekraz was the person responsible for taking the claws of Cringer, and I gotta say, the design here, it's freaking awesome. He's creepy, sinister, and just downright badass. Cringer now face to face with his former tri-mates who now controlled by Rekraz, as he calls out to Cringer, Hey, cockhead up here! But Cringer knows he's outnumbered and makes a run for it. Duncan, Teela and Orko now arrive at Troller, as they come across the statue of Orko, but his people appear to be long gone. A scene, well, straight out of Rise of Skywalker, as Orko out of frustration fires a beam of power, shattering Orko's statue a la Rey from episode 9. I mean, if you're gonna copy something, why not copy the great movie like Rise of Skywalker? Am I right? Am I right? As we cut back to Adam and Kraz, it looks like Adam's taking a shit. Oh, not while I'm in here trapped with you. Hey, I need to take a shit. What else can I do? Cringer still being hunted as he runs and runs, but is finally caught up by Rakaz. As he demands the tigers within his control face off against Cringer. But oh, just in time, Kraz and Adam appear, but Adam is tossed away like Kevin Smith's revelation script. Rakaz turns the tigers on Adam and Kraz, and in a change of law, Cringer himself calls off the power of Grayskull and transforms. Thus, Adam and Kraz follow and become the mighty He Man and Ram Man. Now, Rakaz, God, saying these names, they give you a headache after a while. Rekraz is up Shit Creek without a paddle, but this is Battle Cat's fight as He-Man and Ram-Man take on the remaining controlled tigers. Battle Cat and Rekaz settle some old scores, now bringing out the whip saying, Hey, you like some bondage, don't you, Cringer? Oh no, I'm not into that shit anymore, as Battle Cat breaks Rekraz's whip, thus breaking the control over the other three tigers. Battle Cat then stops the other three from eating his ass alive, and wow, that was really dramatic, wasn't it? Couldn't you have just said, Hey, shitheads, maybe let's just not eat him. Just a thought. 
what? Rakaz? Well, he flees to fight another day. And I mean, what a horrible, nasty beast of a man he was. Hmm. I like the sound of that. A beast man. Yeah. Orko upset with learning the truth that he is, in fact, not the real Orko. Teela says, toughen up, shithead. I'll train you to be a better wizard. Duncan says, really? We're taking this shithead home with us? Oh, okay, sure thing. Returning to the home of the Tiger Tribe, as Rami decides to remain behind, claiming, this is our home. This is what we should be fighting for and defending. However, He-Man disagrees, believing... Our duty is not just to defend the Tiger Tribe, but to defend all. But Chris says, screw you guys, I'm going home. Good. Great. Go ahead. We don't need ya. Thus capping off the episode with Rakaz being seeked out by Evelyn, as she says to him, hey, here's your whip, I need a good spanking. Oh yeah, the end. And that was episode 7, He-Man the Hunted, and I gotta say, I really like this episode. It has conflict between our heroes that isn't forced or is one-sided unlike Revelations. Both sides make a good point in their argument, unlike Teela, who is wise, brave, strong, righteousness, who can do no wrong in Revelations. Here it's balanced out really good. As for Rakaz, it is amazing design, creepy and a great new villain to the world of He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. I won't say any more for later on. Out of five Gwildor Cosmic Keys, this would easily be a four. I really dug this episode. And once again, thank you for watching, people. We're actually nearing the end to these reviews, but I will always be continuing my reviews with a classic filmation show, the 2000s He-Man, the live-action Dolph Lundgren movie, and much, much more. So please, if you've enjoyed this video, maybe give us a like, maybe even subscribe for future He-Man and the Masters of the Universe content. This has been Wayne for Beyond Greyskull, and as always, until next time.